Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to show you guys the basics of getting drag and drop to work inside of a Godot game. So moving data from one UI, I have a basic player inventory over here, to a shop, and you can see that when I'm inside the bounds of the shop, I can let go of the drag, and if I check my console, you can see that I outputted that I am starting a sell prompt for selling the item from the player inventory to the shop. Now, of course, that part's not implemented, but we can confirm that the data is being sent from here to over here and to the shop. Okay, so in Godot, any control node can actually implement drag functions. So there's two sides of that. There's one for the sending data, and then there's one for the receiving data. And any control can add both of them in for sending and receiving from the same control node. So let's go ahead and take a look at what sending data might look like. So inside of my player inventory UI, right now I have a item list. So the item list is going to hold a bunch of items from the player's inventory. Now these items only show the icon and the string name for the item. So if you're gonna implement an inventory like this, then you would need some connection to the actual item resource itself because the item resource will have a lot more data. So for instance, I can take a look at my uh, grass item here and you can see it has a display name, an icon, tags, uh, a cell value and a stack maximum. So a lot more than just a name and a icon. So if you want a drag uh, from this control node to actually do something and to bring data with it, then what you need to implement is the function get drag data. So if we search get drag data, then you'll see that this is actually attached to the control node. So this is a virtual function that you can implement. It has the position where we start the drag and the variant that returns from here is the data that we're actually bringing with the drag. So you just need to implement this virtual function, which means you create it inside of a script attached to this node. So you have the at position, which I'll indicate here as a vector two and I'm going to return some kind of data. So it said variant as the return type, which pretty much means as long as it's a valid Godot data type or object, then you can send it. So this items transfer data is a custom class I created uh, just to hold the data where I want to bring with to the other node. And I think creating it inside of a custom objects class is handy because you can easily check if the data is the right type just by checking if uh, the data received is of items transfer data type. So we can take a look at that really quick before we get into the rest. So items transfer data, you can see I made an init function. So in order to create one, you can just pass in these parameters. So I have the items owner, which is any object that could be a node or a resource or just a base object class, the container, which holds the items where uh, we are bringing from one UI to the other, and then the indexes of the selected items. So in this container, uh, there's an array of items and then these are the indexes that we want to be sending specifically to the other ui so with this information pretty much we can have one ui interact with the inventory referenced on a completely different ui node just by dragging and dropping so we're sending the data from one to the other and you can see up here you can just create whatever properties you want uh, basically it's like you had a function with unlimited parameters all contained within this one object class so that's the way I'm doing it. You could just send a single parameter, like an integer if you wanted, but anything more complex than that. And this is a handy way of having one parameter that holds all the data. Okay, so how do we know which items we're actually bringing from one inventory to the other? Well, item list has a handy function called get selected items. So that applies specifically to the control item list. You could also try something like a grid layout or any other container that you want, but item list has uh, very specific features for being able to select items and knowing what's selected. So I think it makes a pretty good base for a UI, or that's at least what I'm trying out so far. So we get the indexes of the selected items, and we would expect that these indexes on the list match the indexes in the inventory. So you probably wanna validate and make sure that they do match up so you actually are referencing the right items. But aside from that, we create our items transfer data, the same way you would create any other new object. So this is where the init function comes in. We have the parameters we want to pass in, the owner of the inventory, the container, which is the inventory itself, and the indexes of the selected items, what we're actually sending from one inventory over to the other. So then there's also set drag preview. So if you want something to display 
a control more specifically to display when you are dragging from one inventory to the other. You can pass a control node into this function, set drag preview. So we can look for that set drag preview. And uh, this is also default of controls. So you put a control inside of here and then wherever the mouse pointer is, this control is going to be following the mouse pointer. So we can take a look up here that I was trying to create a drag control which had a grid container and I was going to add a whole bunch of different items to it, creating a drag icon for every item that was selected in the inventory. So kind of a mass drag and drop. I haven't gotten that to work though yet because it seems like nested children under these um, drag controls do not move properly with the root control. So they would just kind of get stuck at uh, zero, zero, the top left corner of the screen. And that was not expected. So I don't know if that's uh, a problem with my code or if it only really supports one control node with no children at the moment for the drag and drop. So you might just want to stick with just creating a single drag icon. So uh, for creating the drag icon to set in the preview, I was just creating a new texture rect, uh, which is a control node that basically shows a texture or an icon. Uh, setting the icon size, I don't think this icon top level was even needed. If I comment that out, it probably still works. And you can also notice that you don't need to add this as a children to anything. So it's expected to be an orphan node, not part of the hierarchy. Uh, when you set the drag preview, because the drag preview will automatically position it in your scene hierarchy as it needs to be. So our texture rect has the texture set and the size set, and then we return that. So we have the texture rect that we want, this drag icon, and we set that to the drag preview. Now you don't specifically have to call set drag preview here in get drag data, but it makes sense because this is when we're generating the drag data. So why not uh, get the icon preview set at the same time? So in get drag data, the important part is that we return the drag data, which I was making my customs data object, the items transfer data. But once again, this is variant. So you can basically make it whatever you want. If it's just gonna be a simple integer or a string, whatever you wanna to send to the other UI. Okay, so with that, those uh, couple functions, that basically gives you where you are selecting on the item list. I have this item selected and I start dragging by holding my mouse button down and then I can drag it into other inventories. Notice how it has that symbol already for being invalid for receiving the data. But as soon as I bring it into a UI that can uh, actually receive this data type, the cancel sign goes away. So if I drop over here and let go, uh, then we get the cell start message basically indicating, hey, I received the data so I can start the cell in the shop prompt if I want. So on this side of things, we'll need to take a look at our other control node. So in this case, that's my shop UI. Uh, in the shop UI, the actual drag and drop is happening up here in shop UI, not the nested flex item lists. So the drag and drop is happening in the root node over here but you could put it in another node instead if you wanted it to be more precise. So I have a few uh, item lists inside of this node hierarchy for different parts of the buy sell process. Uh, but for the drag and drop, I only need to make sure that it's somewhere within the shop UI, and then I'll be using that for selling items to the shop. So what you're gonna wanna make sure is that your shop UI, the mouse property, for filter is uh, set to either pass or stop so that it can actually receive GUI input events like mouse moving into here uh, so that it can receive the drag drop data. And then for your other nodes, like let's say we have this item list down here, you're gonna wanna make sure that its filter is not set to stop because if you hover your mouse over this area and this is stop, it's gonna block the other nodes under it uh, like the shop UI from being able to receive the data. Um, so if you hovered over the flex item list over here, then it wouldn't actually show the you can drag and drop here because this is now blocking it. So make sure that uh, your other nodes don't use stop to block it unless that's intended. Okay, so let's jump into the script here. There are two methods you need to implement, uh, can drop data and drop data. So these two are virtual functions from the control class as well. So if I go to control and I do something like drag as the search, then we can see can drop data right here and uh, drop data are two methods at the top for controls. So if you implement these, then you'll be able to drop data into the shop. Okay, so 
your UI probably doesn't want to just accept any old drop data. So that's why you implement uh, can drop data so that you can validate the data being received, which at this point is only acknowledged as being variant type, which basically means anything valid in Godot uh, could be a, a variant type, any Godot object or any primitive data type like integer or float or string. So we want to check this data and make sure that it's the right type in order to interact with the shop. So in this case, I'm checking, is the data items transfer data, which as you remember, is my custom class for interacting between inventories and shops. So I can show you that again, just a few properties here that I would want um, to know about whenever I am interacting between shop or inventory UI. And if you want, you can implement the underscore init function um, for the object type dot new so flex item container dot new and then all the parameters uh, that's what that's about there but you don't have to you could just create the object with dot new and then set these individually after the object is created as well okay so uh, we check if the object is items transfer data if it is then we can drop the data otherwise we can't so this shop ui only accepts this data so if that's valid then we get into here as soon as the data is dropped. So actually for handling the data, drop data, we have the position where it was dropped, which you can uh, optionally use if you need to, and then the data which was dropped. Now note here, this is also a variant again, so you're going to want to check if it is um, of the data type that you need. And one reason I like to do this, although it's not explicitly required, is so that you can interact with this data um, knowing about the properties and methods of this data type. So if I go a new line here and I say data dot, and then you see the properties that items transfer data has. So because we've already verified that this is of this type, then we can see those properties automatically populate there, which is pretty handy. Okay, so we're handling items transfer data. And then uh, I would check, for instance, if the items owner is a player. So I'm only going to allow players to sell at the shop. And then I can do whatever I want with it, like start a cell prompt, which is going to pass in the item's owner and the data. Now, when I actually look at this, having two parameters is pretty redundant here because uh, the data already contains the item's owner, but you get the idea. So our cell prompt method and await is just to indicate that uh, we wait for this to finish and send us our results before we continue. And then we can do other stuff with the results after that. I uh, don't need to worry about that for right now. I mean, I haven't implemented it anyway. So let's look at the cell prompt. So in the cell prompt, we have our seller and then we have the items to sell. So the items to sell is contained within our items transferred data because we know the inventory it's coming from, the owner of the inventory and the indexes of the items that we're trying to sell. Then we can take that information and easily tell the shop to sell those items and transfer the correct amount of currency back to the player's inventory. Obviously I haven't implemented that, but you can see that we can at least reach this point because print debug actually occurs. And if I wanted to, I could uh, do something like print debug items to sell dot selected. I could also do print debug items to sell dot items owner. And uh, let's see how that goes. So if we hit play here, and I go up to the shop, we interact with the shop, I bring my data over, let's drag and drop it there. Then we can see in uh, the console that we have my debug sort hero, which is the seller, and then the positions we want to sell from the inventory, slot zero, uh, which of course is this first slot, the grass. And if you wanted to verify even further, I can go to my actual scene and check my item container and my stack of items. Okay, so we have this grass. It's in slot zero of the array because it's the first one. So here's the actual index. And yeah, that pretty much confirms that we have the right data. We know who's selling and we know what they're selling and it's in the shop UI. Okay, so that is pretty much in a nutshell how you get drag and drop sending data from one UI to another UI component to work inside of Godot. Uh, I believe in the more intended way, implementing the official control virtual functions and adding them to your game. So I am working on an inventory system, which is going to have the sort of stuff implemented. I am currently calling it flex inventory, but it is not currently ready for release at all. 
But if you want to get updates on that, you could follow me on either Ko-Fi, Patreon, or my itch.io page, and you can get notified once I have it in a working state and I actually go ahead and release it. You can also check out my other plugins down below if you're interested. You can also check out my other Godot plugins, all written in Godot script for Godot 4. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully I gave you a good head start into getting drag and drop to work in your game, and I will see you guys in my future video content.